Hi there, I'm Robert Joseph. Thank you for joining me today. So I'm gonna show you how to make a, this sexy little number. So I think you're really gonna have a lot of fun with this. Um, I do wanna say that this is probably more for um, an intermediate sewer, um, not so great for a beginning sewer because I'm using a trim on this one. So I'm gonna be using fold over, or sometimes you'll hear me say double fold elastic, and that is elastic that actually has a line in the center. I have some here. I have um, two different kinds and uh, two different sizes. So uh, uh, the mo most of the double fold of or fold over you're going to find online um, it has a matte side or a plush side, which looks like, make sure I can get the light on this. Uh, okay, or it has a shiny side. Okay, um, and I have two sizes. So this size is one inch wide, and this side is five eighths inch wide. Now, if you shop at Joann's, I did buy this other uh, fold over, and this is one inch. Let me see, is that true? One inch, yes, measure it there. Um, and this ha is uh, a little bit more expensive. It's plush on one side. Um, and it, but it's not shiny on the other, it has ridges. So um, when I would fold this over, I would fold it over to see the plush side, okay? So now you will have to make the decision if you want to use the 5 8 or the one inch. Of course, if you're folding the one inch, you will, it will come out being about a half inch or slightly less than that um, around the outside of the pouch and the opening here. So I haven't actually really talked too much about the short uh, because I wanted you to know that I'm using a trim in the video, which you may need to purchase extra, which that is all on the uh, pattern information. So let's talk about this uh, boxer here. So this is actually, I styled this after the show off, which actually has a very low rise, low waist. And I actually raised the waist on this a little bit and I gave it a slightly longer leg, just a little bit. So it does have a gusset that goes from the front to the back, and you can see that here, but the front pouch is completely separate. So, and underneath, if I lift this up, is a hole. So I won't go into further detail about that. You can kind of see that and do some imagination on your own. But this front pouch is separate and it works similar to what my uh, strapless G-string is or even the, uh, the basic G-string. So uh, this is where all of your goods will go. Um, and actually I gotta tell you, even though this isn't really the style of underwear I wear, and I put this on, it's really comfortable, um, especially if you're gonna be using a super stretchy knit or a knit that has a lot of stretch in it. So this will definitely hold you um, in, basically. So um, on this pattern, again, I just want to emphasize that I do use the double fold here around the pouch, and I also use it here um, around the opening here. Um, so that is the major parts of this uh, underwear. But I will say that at the end of the video, after I do the finished pictures at the end that you usually see, I will have um, information for you and I'll do just a little bit of a demo. If you don't want to use the double fold and you'd rather use an elastic, um, how we normally would use them in the swimwear, I use elastic around the uh, leg openings and we turn it over and stitch it down. If that's something you would rather do. Um, if you can't find the double fold, I will show you how to add the seam allowance on the pouch and here on the opening because there's technically no seam allowance where the uh, double fold is. So one more thing about the layout is that I have two different layouts for you. Uh, one is for sizes extra small through medium and the other is for the large through the double XL. So obviously the um, larger sizes will take a little bit more fabric um, than the smaller sizes. So just be aware of that when you're purchasing fabric and laying it out. Now, obviously you can see in these both these pictures, there seems to be a lot of fabric that is left over. Um, if you can lay out your fabric um, a better way, then more power to you. So I talk about that in the beginning, um, just before I cut everything out. So I do talk about 
layouts and how you can kind of save some fabric. I will mention though the gusset. Everything here is cut on the fold and so the front pouch I talk about if you want to line it or not. Now the pattern on the pattern piece it says cut four which is two pair so um, and that's for lining the front pouch. If you don't want to line it then you're just going to pick, uh, cut one pair which is a left and a right. The gusset, however, is just one layer. So down in the bottom of the layout, there's a little white dotted line that you can kind of barely see, um, but the, gu the gusset is only meant to be cut out of, of one layer of fabric. So just keep that in mind. So now that I've talked to you quite a bit about this pattern and how much fun it is, um, understand just one more time that this is probably a better suited for an, an intermediate sewer than a beginner sewer. And now, because I've talked to you too much, I will get straight to the tutorial right after the intro. Okay, so before I start cutting out, I just wanted to talk to you about the pattern, the pattern layout on the fabric. So uh, I give you a guide, the amount of fabric that you will need for the specific sizes. Just go ahead and look for that in the information uh, packet. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two different fabrics, just like you saw in the intro. So the amount of fabric that I suggest is for using the same fabric for all for the entire garment. So I just want to show you what that layout would uh, look like. So um, I have folded fabric. This is 60 inch wide. The cut I have here is um, a half yard. So I'm, I can lay the main body piece here on the fold here. Um, and then I have all this other fabric here that I can uh, cut the uh, front pouch and the gusset out of. Now the front pouch I say, to cut four, um, and that's two pair. That means you're gonna have two left and two right. Um, and that is, you cut four so that it's lined. Now, if you don't wanna line this, then just cut one, one pair. So you're cutting two, a left and a right. Um, but understand that if you don't line it, you're going to have the seam here at the uh, center front of the pouch, and that may not be uh, comfortable. So uh, that's why I'm lining it. So I'm choosing it to line it. So now in this exercise, this demo, I'm actually going to be cutting the gusset and the front pouch out of a different fabric. So um, this fabric here is Jersey Knit. It's a burnout, and so you can kind of see through, through it a little bit. So there, that means that there's cotton in it. So um, it actually burned out the cotton that was in here and the open parts are the actual uh, polyester. So, or nylon or whatever synthetic it is. I can't remember, I had this fabric for a long time and I'm finally using it. So, um, so follow your directions. All of the grain lines are for the greatest stretch. Now on the gusset, I have two grain lines. And the reason for that is because you can cut this either way. So some people will say the cross grain or the straight grain. The straight grain is the length at the length of the yardage. Um, so, but uh, knits don't really have what we call a grain. They have a loop, so they're interlocking loops. So usually the greatest stretch is across the body or anything that goes around the body is considered the greatest stretch. Now some knits stretch equally in the cross and in the length. Um, so that's why I gave you two different uh, ways to cut it. If it saves fabric and it stretches the same in the length, you can actually cut it this way. Um, so you want to test your fabric. So um, I have a really good stretch on the cross grain. And even though I have stretch on the length, it's not as good as the cross grain. Um, so consider where this pattern piece is. This pattern piece is basically in your crotch. So it's the area between your legs um, going from front to back. So this is gonna be sewn here and we're going to be creating this little 
uh, circle here, this opening. So this is gonna go, this piece goes in between your legs and you really need the stretch in this direction, okay? And kind of like the top to bottom, okay? Um, but if you have, if your stretch in your fabric goes lengthwise, then you can actually cut it here because you're getting the, let me, if you can actually do it this way on the cross grain um, because that stretch on your fabric is really good this way. So if I were cutting it out of this fabric, I would actually lay it this way because I need the stretch to go this way more and this fabric has more stretch on the cross grain. So that's why I would cut it this way. And then I have my pouch, I can do a pouch here and I can do a pouch here. Okay, now I have a lot of extra fabric. If I were actually making this for myself, I would try to figure out how um, I can save fabric, but I'm actually not cutting this on the, uh, out of this fabric. I'm cutting it out of a different fabric and I'll bring that fabric in now. So I had this scrap of this and this is, uh, I believe, uh, polyester nylon. And this is super, super stretchy in both directions right and it has really great stretch recovery i just have this small piece but i can get uh, two pair of this out of this and i can actually just cut this in any direction i want on this because the stretch is so good okay so uh you will see me do that now i just noticed this one thing on this fabric my salvage is kind of crinkling up i'm going to actually cut that off before out i cut out the uh, pattern pieces just to make sure that I can get that laid out nice and nice and flat. Um, okay, so you'll see that um, in the video. Okay, so now that I've explained um, a lot of this, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the fabric, uh, use my weights and cut out the fabric. Okay, so I've got everything cut out. And one quick note, I pre-cut my waist elastic and my uh, double fold and will or fold over elastic. And I'll talk about this once we get to that point, okay? So for my waist elastic, I'm using the uh, sport elastic and this is one and, quarter, one and a quarter inch wide. And that's what I made uh, the elastic for on this waistband. Okay, so that's what the pattern is built for. So uh, I pre-cut those, so I'll set those aside. And I'm gonna actually set the body, the, all the patterns, the body and the gusset aside. Get these patterns out of the way. I don't need the body and the gusset right now. So we're just gonna be working with this front pouch. So now I have two pairs. So, and I cut them, uh, you saw me kind of look at which side was the face side. And when I have these, I kind of like to uh, cut the fabric folded over face sides to face sides so I don't really have to um, handle the fabric a lot. This is a super stretchy fabric. So if it was stretched out, um, I would have to wait for it to relax. And sometimes you cut it out when it's stretched out and then you come back the next day and it's shrunk up. So just make sure that you when you cut something, 
on a super stretchy knit. Sew it up right away. So I'm just getting these um, layered on here on top of each other. So each pair is face sides together and then we're gonna stack them on top of each other. So there are four layers and I'm going to actually pin. So we're gonna sew on the outside of the pouch and I'm just gonna pin that together just to keep everything in place. We want to make sure that we get all the layers caught in that and I'm going to be using my overlock serger to do this. It's really the best way to sew with knits. Okay so I like to go from the bottom of the pouch all the way around up to the waist. Okay so um, in this area where you're doing this curve try not to stretch it out too much when you're sewing. So go ahead and stop uh, the machine and lift the presser foot and reposition and then can and then put the presser foot down and continue sewing. Take your time with that. You don't want this to get stretched out. All right. So I'm going to go sew this outside seam right now. All right, so we've got the front pouch uh, all sewn together. Um, now we're going to turn this face side out. So you really only need to actually turn one, one side, one layer out, and then kind of reach in here and pick out the two. And now if you're using a print, um, you know, you decide which side is gonna be the outside. It kind of doesn't matter, um, and you'll see why once we get there, but I like to know which side um, I'm wanting to actually look at on the outside. So this is the pouch, and now I have the double fold, or I call it double fold, but a lot of people call it fold over, and it's this uh, lightweight elastic, and there's a line in the middle. Where am I in the camera? Okay, where, there's a uh, line in the middle that you can just fold that over and you have a shiny side and you have a matte side and I'm going to show the matte side so the fabric is going to be laid in here and the way you're going to do this is if this is this is the pouch you're going to line up the edge of that fabric and we're going to do we're not going to pin anything we're just going to put it in the machine and actually let the machine do the work but you're going to have to line up the fabric edge with that line and then we will be folding this over on top of it and then zigzagging stitching it down now you want to make sure that you're using a zigzag or a cover stitch to do this um, because you need this to stretch because we're going to be stretching this as we sew and that will actually help us to fold it and you'll see that in the machine probably for this one I will probably not speed up um, and if I have to talk to you along the way um, then I will so um, it's going to be hard to um, get the hang of it I would buy extra of this and kind of practice with it on some uh, scrap fabric if you're not used to it now I've cut off of a full yard so I give you suggestions for the amount that you need for the pouch um, and let me grab my patterns here the pouch and then of course for this opening here so I give you which goes through the gusset as well so um, I give those amounts but I give more than you need and the reason I give you more than you need is because in the beginning of this you're ne gonna need to put this in the machine I'm gonna you're, I'm gonna show you that I actually fold this without the fabric and I get it started so that I can actually feel it from the back of the foot and I can kind of grab onto this because you're gonna need to help this through the machine at first and then we're going to actually once we get past about an inch or so that's when we're going to start stretching and we're not going to stretch it a lot well we'll stretch maybe half of the stretch amount or a little less um, to get this round so um, if you saw in the introduction this pouch is separate so we want this elastic to elasticize this area here so it holds on to your body and that's what we're doing with this okay is that we're using the elastic in it to actually hold this up so it's cupping you so all of your jewels like fit in here and uh, cup it and hold you in 
okay? So once you see it done, I would suggest watching this first and then give your hand a try. So again, we're gonna show the matte side. So um, I'm gonna actually get this started in the machine. It'll be folded over. And they'll just go and pin so you can kind of see what I'm gonna be going for. So I'm probably gonna have an inch or more on the outside. And then once I get this going, this fold over in the machine, right we're going to want this on the edge now there are two layers here so you're going to have to manage both two two of the layers so if you're working with a stable knit that will help of course this isn't being stretched right now so this is what we're going for okay so um and this is you should know this is 5 8 inch wide fold over um, and I say that on the pattern, that's what I made this for. You can find one inch wide, which will fold to a half inch. It's a bit wider. If you like that look, you're more than welcome to do that. So on the edge of the pattern pieces for wherever I'm putting the double fold, there's no seam allowance. So if you choose to do this with elastic, putting elastic on here and then folding it over, you're gonna lose some of the uh, width of the, um, of the pouch here you're also going to make the opening the hole um, in the actual body of the garment you're going to make that wider so um, and at the end of the video i will show you how to add the seam allowance so you maintain um, the same widths and everything so i'm going to go ahead and get this started in the machine and we'll see how it goes okay it's one more one more thing before i go um, and i'll go ahead and put this on the screen as well um, my zigzag stitch length, the stitch length is for three, and my width of the zigzag is 3.5, three and a half, okay? So length of three and width of three and a half. Now that's on my machine, and again, I'm using the Brother CS6000i. Um, so uh, you just don't want the zigzag to go um, too wide, all right? So I'm gonna go do that right now. Okay, so I think I'm gonna actually walk you through this a little bit. So I'm gonna take these pins out. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is kinda, uh, again, uh, where am I in the camera? Okay, here we are. So again, there's a shiny side and a matte side, and I'm gonna see, I wanna see the matte side on the outside. So what I'm gonna do is I, I folded it over, and you can kinda see that line here. So I'm just gonna fold that over and I'm gonna actually get it started so that I can actually grab it from back here um, to help it through, okay? So uh, let's see how, so on these home machines, there's not, let me take this foot off so I can show you. And I think I've showed this several. There's these feed dogs on home machines are really, really wide. So getting something that's this narrow in there to take it, it's, you have to be kind of really um, precise about where you're actually putting in my thread got up on my um, presser foot. Okay, so I gotta put my presser foot back on now. Okay. Okay, so I wanna get this started. And I didn't really cut this off again. I just cut off a uh, yard. I probably should have pre-cut it to about the size. You want about an inch on either side left over. So I've got it in there. Now I'm just gonna go kind of slow. And you see it doesn't like to take it um, because it's being stretched at the same time. So don't pull on this. You want to get it going. So we're going to be wasting some. You see how it's coming out here? Now I can kind of grab on that and I'll be able to help this through the machine. So now you see where this open part is. Now I can grab my uh, front pouch and this is the side I want to see. It doesn't really matter because this is um, probably the same uh, the same on both sides. Then I can lay this in here. You see where it's full and I can kind of lay that up there. Now we're putting elastic, our elastic waistband is going over this about an inch and a quarter. So it's okay if it's kind of messed up at the beginning, but you want to make sure that you get both of these layers in here and aligned on that line. And then you'll fold that over. Once you have the, uh, the, the main fabric, the body or the pouch fabric um, underneath, you're pretty good to go. So I'm gonna get this sewn up. Okay, so I've got that going. So it's already caught in there. Both, everything is caught in there. So what I wanna do 
not really going to stretch anything just yet, but I'm taking a little bit here, lining it up on that line, and then folding over. And I just want to get this started so I have more, right? And you see, because I'm not kind of pulling here or stretching anything, I'm going to, I'll show you when I pull it out. I have, I'll get really narrow zigzags. So now I'm going to actually stretch, start stretching this. So you see how much I'm stretching it? I'm not stretching it a lot because you're going to end up pulling everything toward you. You don't want that. So you only want to stretch about, you know, give it a nice decent tug, but not a lot. Um, and just still make sure I got a little off there. Still line that fabric up. After you stretch, hold it down. You'll have to use your hands while I don't gonna pucker there. And then you're gonna have to help it through because you're pulling this toward you. So you're gonna have to pull from the back to get this going. And when you stitch your zigzag, try to get one of the stitches right on that edge of that uh, fold over but not past it. So you'll have to take your time on this. Uh, once you get used to, to using the double fold, it will just come naturally. Um, so again, I'm stretching this and then I'm laying the fabric into that. And then I'm gonna tug here on the back of this and sew up. And one thing is when you're working with this and you need to stop, make sure you do bury the needle down in it to hold everything together because there's nothing worse than you're going and you have to stop and reposition yourself and you pull too hard and everything pulls out of the machine so make sure that that needle is down so i'm going to grab so take some more of this stretch a little bit right so i'm stretching and let's see if i'm here you can't see it let me see my finger is here and if I stretch that much, it looks like I'm stretching about three quarters of an inch stretch. I measured from here to where my finger had stretched it. Okay. Okay. So now when we come to this seam, it's going to be kind of thick. So you'll just have to make sure that you, everything gets in there and both sides of the fold over get caught. So I kind of tend to take my finger and kind of uh, flatten that really good, hold on to it. And then I'm going to stretch this just a little bit too. And then fold that over, then I'm holding it and I'm going to go. Now I'm going to stop, do one more stitch. <laughs> I'm going to stop here just before I get in there because I want to make sure that I can stitch all the way over it and then some, right? Because I don't want to actually stop there because I, I don't want to reposition myself in the center. Just make sure that gets kind of inside that elastic and pull from the back. And I'm past the seam now, so I'm going to stop. And you see that I'm only stitching a little bit at a time stretch make sure everything is underneath feel like no nope, we're still good make sure that your sorry about my hands in the camera but I got to make sure that all my edges are close are there lined up once you get used to using the double fold you'll actually I think you'll like it. I think you'll like using it. You can use this for, you know, hemming as well instead of, you know, turning it up. So I've got everything lined up there, fold over, and then again. And we're coming up to the end. Now I didn't cut off this length. What you would want to do is um, measure the outside where you're sewing. Actually, I'll wait till I'm done and then I'll go back to the table and I'll tell you if you don't want to go off of my measurements. So once I come up here, remember I didn't stretch. This is the side um, right here, um, right here, this area. I didn't really stretch. So we want to make sure that we don't overstretch here. So I'm coming up to eh, about an inch right here. And then I'm going to let go of that stretch and just fold it over and then let kind of pull from behind. Make sure that doesn't come out, even though that's going to be cut off. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna go up. I don't need to, I don't really need to backstitch. I just have an extra length of the fabric or the um, fold over. Okay, so here it is. We've got this all stitched on all the way around. Okay, and everything is in there and on the other side. So that looks pretty good. So um, I'm gonna take this back over to the table and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so I we have the pouch here and I actually, I removed the mat so I thought it would be easier for you to um, see. So I, again, I just cut a yard. Um, so I'm gonna cut this off right here um, instead of individual pieces. Now, um, if you're worried about how much, again, I give you suggestions and I give you more than what you actually need for each of the, uh, um, we're putting a uh, fold over here along the uh, pouch. So I give you more. So you saw me in the beginning on, this is where I started on this edge uh, right here. So you need to have that started so you can actually help pull it through. Otherwise, you know, the machine isn't gonna wanna take it because you do need to stretch this. That's how we get here. If you can see, that's how we get um, this to kind of lift up a little bit, <laughs> lift up a little bit to hold you in, right? Okay, so now don't cut these off. I mean, you can if you want to, but I, I like to leave these just in case because I don't want it to fray out. Uh, I don't want the stitches to pop out here. We will be cutting that off later. But actually for now, the pouch is done. So we're actually going to work um, with the gusset and the uh, body here. So here, what we're gonna do, this is the body and I'm gonna open this up. This is the whole thing, but we're going to be working with the front pieces. So here is half of the front. Okay, and this is where we're going to be sewing the gusset too, okay? So this is the way it needs to go. These two curved parts need to match. Um, this is the center front right here. This is up, above, up near your waist. Um, and this is where basically your inseam, okay? So I've got these two match. I'm gonna match these face side together and I'm gonna do these one at a time so you can see if I pin them both at the same time because we have two sides. So here's the other side. I know it's a little confusing, just stick with me. So we have this other side. This is the other front side of the inseam that we need to sew. If I pin both of these, well, I'll go ahead and do it so you can see. Um, I just don't wanna confuse you about what, we're, what you're doing. Okay, so I'm gonna pin this here. So that's one. And then this, we just don't want to get these. Let's flip this over. Can we flip that, that over? So I want the face side. Okay, this is the other side of the front. This is the center front up by your waist. And then this is that inseam. We've already pinned this other one, right? So we need to come over here and pin the other one. Okay, so now let me just carefully lay this here. Okay, so if I can get this kind of lined up. So these are the inseam seams, right? And eventually we're gonna close up the center front. Whoops, I need to lower this so you can see that. Okay, but we're not gonna do that because we need to put the double fold around the circle first. So I'm going to sew these two inseams, which are actually closer up to your front of the body. So I'm gonna actually sew from the bottom, from the hem or the leg opening up to the circle part, all right, on both of these. And I'm gonna use my... Okay, so we've got the gusset sewn to the front of the garment and you can kind of see we've got this 
circle here and that's where we're going to be putting the double fold and we're going to start it the same way now one thing about these seams is you'll have to decide which way you want the seams to go and i'm going to flip this face side out because we're going to be actually sewing on the face side or the right side i don't say right side because we have a right and a left side of our body and i don't want that to be confusing so i say face side of the of the fabric so let me turn this around okay so I like to have these seam allowances going toward the body. So I'm going to just put a pin there and I'll have to remove this, um, you know, once we get in there sewing. So I know that that seam allowance is going to go um, toward the body. Um, also, try not to stretch this circle area, otherwise you'll make it bigger. So we will be stretching the double fold. Again, I'm going to start that double fold the same way as I started it before. And I'm going to have to do go in this way, right? We're going to start here, right? And I'm going to get it started and then I'll put the fabric in here. Now this is a curve. So when I say don't stretch it, you know, you don't want to be stretching it out. You just want to lay it in there and you can't, I know you can't see this. You just want to lay it in there next to that center line folding it over as you go and then we'll be stretching this as well and about the same amount don't stretch it you know a lot you want to stretch it you know so you're stretching it about a half inch no more than a three quarter inch stretch okay so i'm going to get this going we're going to be sewing around this little circle this little circle here okay so I think I'll probably talk you through this one as well because it's just a one layer. Okay, so let's go over to the sewing machine. Again, I have the zigzag set at the same three inch length and three and a half inch width. Okay, so we're uh, back here at the machine and I'm gonna get this double fold going again. There's the shiny side and the matte side. We wanna see the matte side. So I'm gonna get this started, uh, fold this over, get this underneath. right like that and then you're gonna go slow to get this started so you can get that back here come on sometimes i push a little bit from the front to give it some oh, i got it back here okay so we're ready to go now so here i am right so now just be careful again not to stretch this out. So I'm going to set this in here. It is a circle. It is cut in a circle. So you may have a hard time getting this in there. Um, but make sure that you're laying that cut edge on that line. We're going to just go slow in this beginning here till we get the fabric caught in there. All right. So we've got the fabric and the double fold so we can kind of re uh, line up our stuff here and i'm just going to push that you see where i've got that edge kind of going now i'm not stretching this but i'm just kind of bending the fabric a little bit on that uh, curved line um, to lay it in there but i want to stretch this again that about that half inch and then fold that over so it's over that fabric and then i'm going to sew and i've got a pull from here from the back okay to help it through you're pulling it so so and i should have said this before the amount you're pulling it should equal to should be equal to the regular stitch length amount that the machine would sew i'm going to take this pin out and then i'm just going to keep an eye on that so that this folds up against that other fabric and i might need my scissors to just trim off this excess thread I'm gonna stretch. I like to stretch and then push that fabric up on that line. Hold that and then sew. Do one more. I like to leave my, my needle buried really at the edge of the uh, double fold. That way I know it's it's got the fabric in there. 
Okay, so we're coming up and you see this is folded over the wrong way, so I want to make sure it's folding up toward the well, the body, which is the uh, gray fabric. And I'm folding over and holding that seam just so I'm doing little short bursts here. Whoops, I don't want that to stretch out. But you want that curve to match up to that center line on the double fold because that's the curve, that's how you're uh, keeping that curve. And I'm gonna have to take this other pin out, but we will trim it. So again, I'm not stretching this blue part, this gusset, I'm stretching the double fold. So this is really lightweight blue. I thought it would look cool with the gray, especially since they're both kind of burn out. The blue is actually a print, not really a burnt. Well, I think it's a, um, just different yarns that have been knitted. Okay, so we're coming up here to the other one. Now this is going to be a little bit easier because it's already going that way. I'm just trimming off these extra threads because they will create some bulk there. Okay, fold that over, that's all in there. Okay, so we're coming up. We're about halfway done with this. Okay, that's good. Now we're coming up to the other front part of that circle opening. All right. And here we come up to the end. Make sure that's a nice edge there. And then I'm going to sew a little bit beyond this. about an inch, and then I'll take it out. So this is what I have left over. Oh, you can't see it. I'll show you on the table. So we've got that done on here now. That looks pretty good. Everything is in. We're not missing any parts, which is good. Um, and I will see you back over at the table. Okay, so we have the double fold on the front circle, and I'm gonna actually just kind of cut a little of this off. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail on, and let's see, I have this extra, that was a yard, so that was a full yard, so I still have this left over, which is fine. Um, so it's surprising how much you actually use. So now this is the face side, so we wanna actually sew up the uh, center front. Now, we will be overlocking that um, but what I'm going to do first is for this part here, because I want it to match, I'm going to stitch it with the regular sewing machine. So I'm going to straight stitch that. So I'm going to flip this to the wrong side of the fabric. Come on. Okay, and then, then I'm going to line this up here for the front. And we'll cut this off before we run it through. Okay. So... The reason I like to do this is because sometimes in the overlock when it runs through, even if I cut this off, one side will be end up being longer than the other. Um, okay, so I've got this lined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in, in the machine like this. So the, I'm going to start here and stitch across here. Now, home sewing machines, because of those feet that I mentioned before, the feed dogs are wide. They don't like to take it, especially with the knit and knit fabric and thicknesses of knit fabric. It just basically stretches the fabric. So what you can do, and I'll have these papers, I have some paper and I'm gonna put it underneath the feed dog and I'm just gonna stitch and then backstitch. And sometimes the paper will help 
the feed dogs to grab and it will go through all right so that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to stitch regular straight stitch a quarter of an inch because that's what the um, overlock seam allowances and that's what the seam allowance is here so just a quarter inch and i'm just going to tack this area down Okay, so I've just tacked that little area um, together. So what I can do, I can just kind of, don't just pull this off, you might rip the stitches. So I'm just gonna tear into the paper and just kind of gently remove it from one side and then the other, okay? Just pull that paper out and then I left my snips over at the overlock, snip up your threads. And then I'm gonna clip off the extra here. Now we're gonna be, um, okay. So now it's just that bit. So let me just open this up so you can see. So I've just tacked that together, okay. So don't pull on it because what we're gonna do now is we're going to overlock this. And I'm gonna actually start with this edge and overlock up to the waist. That way I can ensure that this part isn't gonna, gonna get stretched down this way. If I did it, if I started up here and then went down toward the, the fold over, then this might get stretched down that way and it won't look good. So I'm going to overlock again from the double fold edge keeping kind of a tail of the overlock thread going up to the waist and finishing it. I'm going to come back to the sewing machine. I'll come back to the table and then we're going to do a top stitch to hold um, this in place and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's sew up this seam. Okay, so I've got that center front uh, seam overlocked and I've trimmed the extra tail here um, to about three quarters of an inch. And what you're gonna do is fold that up to that seam allowance, right? Hold on to it. You want that, cause we're just gonna tack the uh, front side. So I'll fold that up to where the seam is and then kind of come under here where that front is and you're gonna push that seam allowance over to that side, to one side. It can be either side, but you want to encase that little tail underneath that seam. Cause what we're gonna do is hold on to that. I'm folding that seam allowance toward the one side. And then we're gonna top stitch here and we're just gonna to tack it and I'll pin that so you can see it. Okay, so we're just going to, I pinned it, um, and we're gonna stitch here, and I'll show you how we're gonna come at that. So this is the center front, okay, right here, and I'm gonna come at, so I'm gonna sew from here to here, and that's the direction I'm gonna sew, because if I do it the other way, the, the machine's not gonna take it. It's just gonna sit there and the needle will go uh, up and down and have a wad of fabric underneath. So I'm gonna come at it that way and I'm gonna actually use the paper again. I'm gonna put the paper underneath it so those feed dogs will actually take something. So I'm gonna stitch from here to here and I'm just gonna tack it, okay? Regular stitch length um, to keep everything down and in place. Okay, so you saw that I had a little trouble there. And yes, I am a professional. So this is one of the challenges with home sewing machines with those really wide feed dogs is that they don't like to take the thickness of the uh, any kind of knit or any, any fabric really. I'm gonna pull this paper off. I'm gonna kind of gently rip. It doesn't look too bad on the inside. So I'm gonna trim off my thread here. 
Okay, and trim up the here. Whoops, you probably couldn't see that. I just trimmed up my threads. So you can see, let me see where that is. Let's see if that will focus there. So it's just like top stitch there, and that's just to hold everything down and in place. Okay, so the paper helped a little bit, but you'll probably have to help it through your machine, depending on how powerful powerful your machine is and what kind of feed dogs you have. Now on my industrial machine, I don't have a problem doing this because I have really narrow, uh, really narrow, you can't see my fingers, really narrow feed dogs, um, and they actually pull um, really well. So that was just to create a, a nicer looking finish. All right. So now that we've got that done, okay, so there's the hole. We actually, I wanna actually sew the gusset to the back. So I'm gonna turn this face side to face side so we see the wrong side. And what I'm gonna do with the back is I'm just gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna find the midpoint of the center back, which would be considered the inseam. So I'm just folding this in half, right? I did not put a notch on the pattern because it was cut on the fold. So there's no problem with doing this. So just get the center there. And then with the gusset, you're gonna do the same thing. So fold that gusset over to find your midpoint here. Okay. So now I have the midpoint of the gusset and the midpoint of the back inseam here. So we'll match up those pins and I'm just going to pin it together like this. Now this is a concave going to a convex. So try again, try not to stretch this, but you're going to match the edges and one edge, probably the garment edge will poke over because that's the way it works and I'll tell you why. Let me get this pinned and then I'll show you. So for a quarter inch seam, so on this other side, this knit is really has a mind of its own. So here you see the gray kind of sticks out. So your, so where it is, and that shouldn't be like that. Get this pinned with your cut edges aligned. And then let me pin it this way. So you see where the gray sticks out and where I have it pinned, where they meet here, that right there is your seam allowance, okay? So we're gonna keep that pinned and then I'm gonna pin the other side. I think I'm probably gonna sew with the blue side down. Let's pin it this way. So I gotta take these pins out anyway. Okay. And then we're not going to stretch it. We're just going to ease the edges down so they match. And sometimes it's easier to do that when you're in the machine because the pins are going to come out anyway. So it looks like it's being stretched, but it's really not. It's just the way that the concave and the convex go together. So I'm going to go and I'm going to run this through the overlock and then I'll be right back here. Okay, so now we have the gusset in, and I'll show you what that looks like from underneath. So this is the whole gusset that is in, um, been sewn in. I'm gonna turn this face side out. All right, so this is the front, and then we have the gusset that is here. 
and this is the back. And um, now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the front pouch and we're going to attach the front pouch to the front. Um, now, of course, you can leave it like this if you would like and just have it put the elastic on. Um, but there's actually a pouch for your goods right here. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up now. I'm going to uh, cut these off so I don't have to worry that they're going to be um, pulling out because we're going to be sewing it right onto the front. I'll just trim this extra off. All right, now on the pattern, I give you these two notches on the front, these two little triangle notches. We're gonna match the sides of this where the uh, fold over elastic is, match that up to those two notches right there. And I'm going to just pin that in place. Make sure you're just pinning it to the front. You can also use, I should mention, you can also use the center if you accidentally or didn't uh, cut the notches out uh, on the pattern. You can line the center fronts up and use that as your um, way to line things up. So I'll just go ahead and do that here. I'm going to pin it this way, then I'm going to match these edges up. Now I'm actually going to tack this front pouch down so that it doesn't move when I put the elastic waistband on. Now I'm doing, um, excuse me, I'm doing the topical uh, waistband and let me grab it here as I do for a lot of my um, underwear. So I'm putting it directly, this is the elastic, I'm gonna be putting it directly on top of like this right on top now if you want to do a fold over elastic like three quarters inch or one inch wide you may need to add a little bit of height here to the uh, to the waist area just just add like your half inch or three quarters of an inch because when you turn that elastic over you'll lose the height if you don't add it um, also understand that if you fold it over like this and do the elastic here this part in the front where the pouch is is going to be really thick so you it may not like going through your machine so what i would suggest if you fold it over what i would do is when you're zigzagging it down lift this up and zigzag across this area and then you can come back and just tack down the edges of the pouch okay but we're going to be i'm going to be doing the topical because that's what it's uh that's the way i built the pattern Okay, so before we get into the waistband though, now that I've got this pinned and matched up to the notches, I'm gonna um, go over to the straight stitch machine and I'm just gonna straight stitch from here across here um, about an inch down. So the elastic is one and a quarter inch wide. So I want to get, uh, stitch it down a little less than that, all right? So that's what I'm gonna just do, tack this area down so it doesn't move around when I actually sew the waistband on. All right, so now we have the front pouch tacked on, uh, which is good. I probably could have used uh, larger stitches here, but this isn't really going to affect the stretch um, very much around the waist. So um, uh, that will, it's actually fine. Um, so we're not gonna work with this for right now. We're actually going to prepare the waistband, the elastic waistband. So we'll just set this aside and we'll get this ready. So again, I'm using the, uh, I should say again, um, I normally use this sport elastic, one and a quarter inch. So um, that's what I'm using this time. Um, I like this because it's nice and soft and the give is actually really um, nice as well. So it's not as stiff as some of the other elastics. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna find the face side and the face side is uh, kind of shinier um, and smooth, whereas the other side seems a little flat and has a more matte look. 
So I'm gonna match the edges of that face side or the right side of the elastic. And I'm gonna match it up here and I'm going to stitch together here a half inch, my half inch seam allowance, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, let me pin this. So I'm gonna sew it a half inch and then I'm gonna open this up and I'm going to finger press the seams down and then I'll stitch this down. I'm gonna use a little zigzag stitch just to cover this raw edge here on either side. And you'll see me do that um, at the machine. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so we have the elastic sewn. Make sure that you didn't get it twisted or anything. Um, so I did want to mention uh, when I did the zigzag here um, on the edge to cover that raw edge of the elastic, um, I did not backstitch. Um, again, home sewing machines don't really like to backstitch on knit um, or stretchy um, fabrics, just like elastic. So uh, what I did is I sewed um, I started about a quarter inch in and then I sewed down and I stopped. I put the needle down and then I lifted the presser foot and I turned the elastic around the other way. I uh, lifted up the needle and then I uh, repositioned the needle so it was at the edge and then I sewed back down and I only backstitched at the very end. Um, and that was just basically to get it to tack. So that's how I did the zigzag here. Okay, so now we need to prepare the rest of the elastic. So I'm going to actually fold it in half and I like to, uh, we're dividing it into fourths. And so I like to fold at that seam edge and at the opposite end, I'm going to put a pin and then I'm going to match that pin to my seam. And then I'm going to a pin, put a pin on either end, on both ends. one and here's the other okay so our elastic is divided into fourths so I'm going to set that aside and then I'll bring the boxer in so now I'm going to do the same thing and I don't have any notches up the waistband again so I'm just going to fold here at the center front and very loosely try not to stretch very loosely just find that center back and put a pin there And then I'm gonna match the center front seam with that back pin and loosely find each of the sides and I'll put a pin on those side folds. And once I get done here, then I'm going to match the elastic pins to the garment pins. Okay, so I've got that all pinned and marked. So I'm going to fold this over to the back because I like to start at the back. So I'm going to match the back, right, uh, of the elastic. And you may want to put your seam. So this is the, uh, the, the edges, the cut edges of the elastic. I'm going to match that to the garment fabric right up here, right on top. And what you're going to do, the way I've built the pattern, is that you're going to match the top of the elastic to the top edge of the garment. So I can get this one pinned and I like to pin in the direction I'm going to sew. So I'll put this pin like this. And for right now, we're just going to use the one pin. I'll come back and I'll repin again and then just match all of the pins going around again, matching the top edge of the garment and the elastic. And then come here up to the center front, whoop. Center front. And then 
the last at the side. Now, if, you're, if you've chosen to roll your elastic, um, sew the elastic on the inside and roll it over, you're gonna be matching and doing everything the same this way. Um, matching it. So when I have everything done, I like to go back and I like to pin the top of the elastic to the garment as well. And what that does is it helps keep the fabric from falling down. Um, when I sew keeps everything nice and even now I have only pinned the center front the center back and then two side areas uh, you can of course pin in between those areas too if you feel you need that sometimes it helps uh, like if you want to pin something like this that's fine right in between your pin pins like that that's fine. So now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. The zigzag stitch um, I'm going to be using the length. The length of the stitch will be three and the width will be three and a half, 3.5. So I used to use a longer um, stitch, but I felt like um, sometimes, especially in knits, the longer stitches will skip. So now again, I'm just going to repeat that. The length of the stitch is at three and the width of the stitch is 3.5. So I'm going to zigzag this waistband on right here at the bottom, and I'm gonna try to catch um, just here, just the edge of this elastic. I put one needle stitch here, and then it will come back over here, and then back here at the edge, okay? And I'm just gonna do one row of stitching. You're welcome to do two rows. Um, if you want to make something a little bit more decorative, that's just fine. So I'm going to do that now in the sewing machine. Okay, so uh, we've got our waistband on. I'm going to remove the extra pins that I don't need. And to finish up the waistband, I'm going to flip it inside out. And I'm going to cut the uh, extra, this extra fabric away. Um, now, of course, you could run another stitch up here and just trim the uh, little bit extra, um, but I like doing it this way. So, but of course, if you have a better method to, that you feel that uh, puts the waistband on, better, uh, then go for it. You'll just have to remember that there's a one and a quarter inch allowance for the elastic at the waist. So um, this is the height of the waist. If you actually want this finished height, you will have to add more to the pattern up here um, to fold over, okay? So just remember that. So I will get the rest of this cut off. Okay, so I've got that cut off. I'm gonna flip it to the face side. And the last thing we need to do is the hem. Okay, so now for the hem, um, for those of you who are using a cover stitch machine, you don't really need to overlock. In fact, you really don't really need to overlock this anyway, but I like to do it if I'm not using the cover stitch. For the cover stitch machine, basically you'll just turn it over the half inch and then you'll be cover stitching on the top um, and that kind of covers the edge here from doing any kind of fraying. Um, knits don't t tend to fray a whole lot anyway. Uh, so, but what I like to do is I like to just mark my hem here on the edge and I'm using an erasable pen and it's a half inch and I just mark 
little marks all the way around the bottom edge. I don't really like to um, press up because it takes so so long, but if you want to press up the hem, that's fine. Now before I actually uh, sew this, I'm going to overlock this edge. So I'm going to try to do that video all in one so I don't have to um, keep coming back to the table. So I'm, you'll see me overlock and then uh, zigzag this over. So um, uh, I don't usually pin up, but I'll show you how I pin up should you want to do that. Okay, so I have it marked, and normally I would go ahead and overlock, and then what I would do is pin this up using my marks like this. And I would pin this, you know, in a few places. Uh, sometimes it's easier with these marks to just fold it as you go. So I would keep it pinned up like that, and then I would run it through the machine. But I need to overlock these first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish marking the other leg opening for the half inch hem. And then I will overlock them, and then I will zigzag them down, and that will complete the short. So I will do all of that, and it will probably all be sped up. Okay, so there we have it. We finished the hem. Um, the entire brief is done. Um, and there you have it, a very sexy boxer brief with a sack front pouch that's separate. Maybe we'll call this a peekaboo front. Um, um, but I got to tell you, um, I don't usually wear things like this. I'm really kind of a boxer brief kind of uh, guy and but I got to tell you trying these on this is actually really comfortable so especially if you're going to be using a really super stretchy nice lightweight um, knit for this front pouch so uh, there it is so I want to thank you again for watching these please subscribe if you haven't subscribed I'm going to be releasing um, a lot of new patterns over the next month and month or two um, I have a lot in my uh, my schedule to get done. So subscribe and then you'll get um, an alarm whenever, uh, a ping whenever I release a new video. So thank you for watching and again, be well. Hi, I'm back. Uh, really quick before you go, um, I did say that I would actually show you how to add the seam allowance around the outside of the pouch and the circle if you wanted to use elastic. 
um, instead of the double fold. So um, I will tilt the camera down um, to my pattern table and I will show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm hoping to get everything in the camera. Um, I have my camera set up a little bit differently than I normally do, so it's a very small space. So you're gonna need the pattern, and here, this is the pattern for the pouch, and we're gonna add seam allowance here on the edge, and then also we're gonna uh, need the gusset and then the main body, and we're gonna be adding seam allowance around here, the bottom of the hole, and then we'll add seam allowance here, around here. Now, because of the double fold, um, it's at the very edge here. Here's another look at it. Um, there's no seam allowance because we're actually using the edge of the fabric um, for the fit. So we're going to add seam allowance. So in case you want to use elastic, and this is, I have some elastic here. This is a quarter inch, and I don't think you want to go any wider than a quarter inch for um, these areas. This is knitted elastic. This is a quarter inch. You could probably try eighth of an inch if you want to. Um, you'll just need to add the appropriate seam allowance for that. So this is lightweight knitted. Uh, it's pretty thin, and so if you're using a medium to lightweight fabric, this would work great. Okay, so we're going to be adding a quarter inch. So what are you going to need? You're going to need a few pieces of paper, and I have some pre-cut uh, pieces of pattern paper here. A ruler, and I like these see-through rulers. Um, this is standard in pattern drafting. Your pencil, and then you're going to need tape. Um, and then I use paper scissors for recutting. Okay, so let's do the easy one first. So let's put it, uh, let's do the seam allowance around the edge. And we're just doing it here. We already have seam allowance here because we've already sewn that. Um, so we're just going to be adding it here. So I'm going to take one of these pieces of paper and I'm going to lay it here. Make sure you can see that. Okay. So lay it here and I'm going to tape up along this edge. Okay, so I'm using um, matte, where are you in the camera, matte um, tape because I can write on this. Okay, so that's all tape. So now let me turn this around so I can actually... Okay, that's good. So now we're adding a quarter inch because we're using, again, quarter inch elastic. So I'm going to line up my ruler so I can see it here on here to the, the cut edge of the paper right here. That's a quarter inch. And I'm going to follow that cut edge of that pattern and mark a quarter inch. You could do it this way, but... Um, if you don't have a see-through, you can just measure out the quarter inch. So this will go pretty fast. And I know that, you know, I'm a pro and I used to do this for a living. Actually, I do this for a living because I do it for you. So I'm just going to mark up that quarter inch. So that was pretty quickly, quickly done for that quarter inch seam allowance. You can see that. And up here, I can just draw this line here and then um, continue this angle, this angle here, lay the ruler here, and then just continue that angle. And then you can just cut out. And then I'm just going to cut a little bit into the original pattern, right? Just like that. And then I'll kind of flip this over. And then I'm just going to cut off this extra. It doesn't have to be pretty underneath. Whoops, I didn't get that all cut. Okay. And then it's always best to tape it on the underside as well. That way it doesn't get caught on anything. Okay, so that was pretty easy. So we're going to do the same thing here. Let's try to save some paper. I'll do it here. We're only adding it here. Everything else has seam allowance. Okay. And here I need to follow this curve. And when you do this, wherever you're matching your quarter inch, go right up perpendicular to that, and that's where you're going to make your mark. 
So straight up this way. Don't put your mark here because that's not going to be a quarter inch. But as long as I go up here and just put little tick marks or hash marks there. All right, and then I'm going to continue this line that way and this line that way. And then I will cut this out. added my quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to tape this on the back. All right, so that's the gusset is done. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the front here. Get this all taped up. Can you see that and that there? Okay, so now we're going to do the seam allowance on this. And there's a little bit of a shadow. Sorry about that. Right? Just do it just like this. Again, perpendicular from where you're laying the ruler. And then clean up your line here and here. That was so fast. And I'm going to just continue cutting this way, right? And then I can come in and cut that way. Cut the most of that away. And then I will cut out along my marks. Okay. And there it is. Okay. That went pretty quickly. That was for a quarter inch. So there's the front, the gusset, and the pouch. I just added the seam allowance. Now you can go make your own. Thank you for watching, and as always, be well.